All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today here at Eve Uni. Uh, this is our public channel, and we are joined by a guest lecturer today, Suetonia from Eve is Easy. My name is Julius Doctor, and I am a guest lecturer and former lecturer with Eve University. And I'm just here to do the introductions and invite everybody to the channel. Please hold your questions unless the floor is open for public questions, and please make sure that you. Um, Post any questions you may have in lecture.etechuni, preceded by a Q and a colon, just so we know that you're asking a question for Suetonia. And here he is, uh, Suetonia. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, thanks for having me. So I'm speaking about solo PVP today. I'm not really sure where I'm going to start. Um, I guess we can kind of do this as a Q and A. I guess the the first thing to say would be to why why do you solo PVP? I think solo PvP is a lot of fun, personally, for me. You may find it fun, too. I think solo PvP is a really good way to learn the game because you're relying on just your own knowledge. And it's a good... I think a lot of good scouts and FCs from alliances start off as solo PvPers or they know how to solo PvP. Because if you can solo PvP, you know how to find content by yourself. Uh, especially when it comes to using things like the map and D-scan, which are crucial roles when scouting. I guess we can talk a bit about the map and its use uh, for solo PvP. So if you if you guys all press F10 on your keyboard, I recommend you press F10 and not use the uh, the beta map that you may have on your screen, because the standard map is much better than the normal uh, than the normal beta map, which I think is enabled by default. It's just F10 on your keyboard, or you can go into the settings and you can disable the beta star map. But the reason why this map is a lot better is because it shows you a lot more precise information. The beta star map, like for example, if we look at average pilots in space, if if you if you get the world map control panel, which I think it should open by default when you press F10. So if you can't find it, it's just like a little icon that has like a map on it, and you'll see that there there should be three tabs at the top: search, star map, and solar system map. If you click on the star map. And then you go down to stars, which should be the first tab on the left. Then you want to go down all the way to statistics. I, I'll type that, that. I'll take a screenshot and post in chat. But you want to go down to average pilots in space in the last 30 minutes. This is probably the most uh, useful tool that you have on the map because it shows you where people are active in space. Currently, it's it's kind of bugged right now. Actually, it shows people who are in citadels too. I'm not sure if CCP is going to fix that at some point. But this is just a good metric to see where people are active in space. I think I'm going to be talking mostly as a as a context of using a frigate for this lecture. Oh, there's a question from Raza. Is there a reason to use the in-game map instead of an out-game game tool such as Dodlam? I think the in-game map is just slightly better than using an out-of-game out tool for, for this lecture. I think Dotlan can be better if you're hunting ratters. Because Dotlan has much better options for finding like rats kills in the last hour. If you look at the statistics, the statistics panel on the world map, uh, there's some data on Dotlan that's not available uh, on the world map control panel. So, for example, if you were looking at NPCs killed in the last hour, if you're trying to find people ratting to kill them, you can only see pirate and police ships destroyed in the last 24 hours. But that's not particularly useful because you know if you're PVPing in the American time zone. You see rap kills that might have happened 10, 10 hours before you, you were online. So it's not useful, but on Dotland it is very useful. I, I guess I can link, link Dotland. And we can talk a bit about Dotland as well. We've linked it there for you. Yeah, so there's some Dotland links in the chat. I linked one as well just to, for a random region, Wicked Creek. For example, if you look at this NPC kills, this is in the last 24 hours. That's exactly what it will show you on the in-game map, but it's a lot easier to see on uh, Dotland, I think. It's presented a bit better. But from the from the options that you can see in Dotland, you can actually chip, you can pick NPC kills delta or NPC kills from the list. And that's much better for seeing what's currently active right now, as opposed to in in the game where you only see uh, NPC kills in the last twenty four hours, which isn't particularly useful. 
have I ever used Pirates Little Helper? Yeah, uh, Pirates Little Helper is actually very useful. I think it's more useful if you're in a region like low sec than in null sec. But Pirates Little Helper can help you. Uh, it, it basically it's like a tool that looks through Z kill Z killboard and other killboard sites, and tells you what like what ship that person is likely to be in. It can also pull like the most recent fittings for that ship. So if you're if you look in a system, you can just easily see what ships they're likely to be in. I think it's more useful in low sec than in null sec, but it it can be a very useful tool. Uh, and another useful website that I like too is Eve Overmind. I'll just see if I can get that quickly. So if you go to this webpage, eveovermind.com, this is a 1v1 analysis, which is actually pretty useful. What you can do there is you can you can pick a ship, let's say your ship. I don't know, let's just select, I'm just going to select Caracal from that list. But you can pick any ship, and then it'll tell you... Uh, what chance that ship has of killing that ship based on Z killboard statistics. So it takes all the 1v1 kills that have happened on zkillboard.com and it just compiles that into a into a list. And on the right hand side you should see sample size. That tells you how many 1v1s have happened between those ships that have been recorded on Z killboards. And then the kill percentage shows how much how, how many of those kills were won by your particular ship. So here's a, just a quick screenshot if you if you're not on the site yourself. <laughs> yeah, capsules obviously always have a hundred percent loss chance against everything, one v one. But it, this is very useful if you're a new player and you you're wondering you know what chance you have of killing a ship. Because you can just press Control F in your browser and find the ship that you're going to fight. Like if you're in a caracal. And let's say you wanted to fight a Vexer. What you could do is you type Control F to find Vexer in your browser. And then you would see that uh, the Caracal actually only has an 18% chance of killing a Vexer statistically out of a sample size of over 1,000. So in this situation, you might think, you know, maybe I shouldn't engage this Vexer in my Caracal because you don't really have a good chance to win statistically. That's not to say that a Caracal can't kill a Vexer, given the right fit. But it's just like a really good indication, especially if you're new and you're not really sure what your ship can fight. It's a very good website for just checking. So go going back onto the map, uh, one thing that you can't see on, on .land that you can see in game which is pretty useful to see is the Sinoshiro Fields option. So we're back in the same, we're just underneath average pilots in space in the last 30 minutes. It's under statistics in the old map. And uh, if you click on Sinoshiro Fields, you'll see uh, a bunch of dots on the map. There's red, red, orange, and uh, light blue. The ones you're mostly interested in are light blue and red. If you're solo PVPing in a, in a ship, if you go to systems with, with the light blue dot, it means that there's an active Sinoshiro field in that system. Normally, these Sinoshiro fields are lit by cheap Tech 1 frigates and, and noob ships. Sometimes they can be lit by more expensive ships or industrials that tank you know, 800 DPS or so. But normally, they're just throwaway disposable ships. And they're also a good way of getting people to fight you because killing them you know, upsets people a lot of the time. Yeah, the red dots, base, the the orange dots are just the POS structure, so they're not useful to you particularly. And the red red dot means that there is a, a an active player Sinoshiro field in the system as well as uh, the POS structure. But they they can be good places to go if you want to get a, a free kill mail normally, and also it's a good way of just annoying people and provoking them to come out to fight you. There's a question by Hanford. How would I normally, how would I personally fit a forex for PvP? I think I would probably fit it. There's there's two good fits in my opinion. There's one which is a whole tanked forex, 
where you fit five neutron blasters, a microwave drive scram, and two webs, and then two mag stabs, damage, damage control, two bulkheads, and uh, three hull rigs. I think they're called traverse something, transverse. And that has a lot of EHP while giving you two webs. It's very good at killing frigates and destroyers because it has a tracking bonus and dual webs, and it's pretty fast too. Because unlike an armor tank setup, you're not slown down by armor rigs or plates. Another way you can fit it is sort of like a dual rep tanked Vexer. Uh, sorry, not Vexer, 4X. They fit like dual rep, damage control, energized adaptive, maybe one mag stab, MWD scram web injector. And then I think you can fit some ion, some electrons. In my YouTube videos, I very quickly narrowed down where the enemy is using my directional scanner. Uh, can I cover that? Sure. I think there are actually EVE university lectures on the directional scanner, which are probably more useful than what I'm going to explain right now. But the, the directional scanner is, uh, the, I think the easiest way to use the directional scanner is to make, first of all, if you need to be undocked, I guess, to, to see this. But while you're undocked, if you if you look to the left of your capacitor, there's there should be a orbit camera. It's the middle option in the first row to the left side of the capacitor. It looks like a circle with uh, two arrows going around it. If you if you hold down Shift and C on your keyboard, I think you can right click it too and to toggle auto tracking. Once you have auto tracking enabled, it should look like a, tar a, a small dot with target crosshair around it. What you can do is you can then just click on an object on your overview and it will instantly snap your camera towards that object. So if you add planets to your overview or something like that, you can very easily just click left click on them and the camera will automatically really quickly like pan over to that. And if you use the five degree option, well, with max scan, that's a very good way of just like quickly scanning down people. Uh, and another thing that comes into the directional scanner too, it, it comes down to knowledge of where people are going to be. Uh, a lot of the time people are going to be in the mining sites. If you're hunting ratters in NOSEC, a lot of the time they're going to be in three different uh, anomalies. Most, most of the time they're going to be in either forsaken hubs that's normally the most popular anomaly for Vex and AV issues. And then there's uh, Havens. Those can be used by Vex and AV issues and carriers too, sometimes rattlesnakes. And then uh, Sanctums. So you're mostly looking for Sanctums, Forsaken Hubs, and Havens. Uh, another thing that's very useful is the probe scanner. I just talked about that a bit, I guess, talking about anomalies. But if you press Alt plus P on your keyboard, uh, or you can click, I think it's the second, ob it's on the second row on the left, under scanners. The easiest way to bring it up is Alt plus P. What I recommend you do is you sort the group descending. And what that'll do is that'll put all the asteroid belts at the top. And when you're trying to hunt miners, it's best to always go to the biggest asteroid cluster. So in in order, it goes colossal, enormous, large, medium, small. So if there was a colossal in the system, you could warp there quickly, and a lot of the time you can catch something like a retriever or a hulk, something like that. And that's how I have it up on, on my screen. So that way the, you can't see it because I have the group the the like these expanded because I don't really need to see it. But it the it's sorted the ascending by group and that way it puts all the all the ore sites to the top of my uh these my uh, probe scanner. So it's very easy for me to just warp to the uh, colossal, the biggest belt. So a few questions that I've missed while uh, I've been talking. What's my favorite solo PvP ship to pilot? It changes a lot, actually, like every month or so. I think my all-time favorite is probably the Kestrel, just because it's really cheap. 
It only costs about 8 million ISK. There's almost no micromanagement involved with the Kestrel. You don't need to manage cap, you don't need to manage charges, it's a buffer tank ship. So it's very easy to fly. Uh, all of the decision making with the Kestrel is mostly done before you fight. Like, you know, like what range you engage, where the fight starts, where is everyone else in the system, those kind of things. You, you're not really concerned with any macro PvP aspects. You're only con concerned with the micro, the macro aspects. You know, like setting up the fight rather than the actual fight itself. How uh, there's a question: How do I fund uh, PvP? Uh, generally, I mostly fly really cheap stuff. Like I said, the the Kestrel, for example, only costs eight million isk. With the with a fit that I use, and most Tech Two frigates uh, that are PVP viable normally cost around four to they normally drop around four to five million isk of loot. Especially armor frigates right now are, are very expensive because they use a small ancillary armor repo. This module costs five million isk right now, which is quite excessive. It's actually one of the things that I want to want to lobby CCP to change because it really hurts a lot of people flying Tech One armor frigates. But for the most part, I've been qu quite lucky in that I won some alliance tournaments, so I had a lot of ISK. But right now I'm in Goon Swarm, and it's pretty easy to make ISK in Goon Swarm by uh, just carrier ratting or whatever. You can make 200 mil an hour. What is a good price range to fit chips for a pro and newer player? I I'd say you want to keep things under 10 million ISK per ship. Uh, it's up to you though. I mean, like if you you don't have to necessarily solo PvP, you can take you know five or six other guys, and you can use Tech One ships. Like if you have two Griffins and just four DPS ships, you can pretty much kill anyone that you catch solo. Well, what's my? I I don't know if I have a favorite good fight. I I have I have some. Uh... I have too many, really, to think about. I almost killed a uh, Alliance Tournament prior ship in a Dramio. I guess that's probably one of my favorites right now. What is my view of preferred weapon systems? I, I think uh, I think I think pulse lasers and rockets are are better for nullsec roaming, especially with lower SP, because with the the problem with blasters and auto cannons is you can't really win one v ones with them. Even if you outplay your opponent because you're missing too much stats, like if you're if you're got bad skills and you're in a Merlin, even if you catch let's say a Kestrel at zero, where the Kestrel should lose with max skills, if the if the guy has better skills than you, he might win. Whereas if you catch a blaster ship with a with a Kestrel, you can still kill him even if you don't have the best skills because he can't do any DPS to where you have him. So I, I think, gen generally speaking, I think pulse lasers, uh, beam lasers, and rockets tend to be the best weapon systems to use. I, I really like scram kiting. I think scram kiting is probably the best best uh, way to do, do lower SP stuff in Nullsec. But ships like the Merlin can be good too, I think, with good skills, because you can try and bait people to follow you to planets in expensive ships like Garmas and Slices and kill them there. I I think auto cannons uh, are are quite good if you have if you can only use tech one guns because auto cannons tend they have selectable damage type and you tend to not get punished that much by not running tech two ammo but once you get tech two I think auto cannons really suffer a lot right now because barrage and hail are not nearly as useful as no and scorches or the hybrid and energy turret. So there's a question. I'm a new solo PvP -er with three months experience. At this point, I think I'm proficient at Tech One Frigate PvP in the Kaldarian Galanti War Zone, mostly in Tormentors, Tormentors Executioners. What would you recommend I I do next to continue improving? Uh, um, it's I'm not it's not really sure because uh, solo PvP is sort of like up to what you want to do. I think the the best way to learn knowledge about the ships is to solo PvP in Nullsec. But then Nullsec is also probably one of the most punishing places to go. 
because it's very knowledge driven avoiding camps and stuff like that at least in in low sec you get the safety net of the plexes but i mean it's it's really up to you i guess in no sec i would say i would say a lot of frigates can work pretty well i i think no sec tends to be a lot more uh like knowledge and macro based like setting up fights finding fights splitting people up and taking them to planets and killing them before the cruisers can arrive stuff like that uh in no sec i think frigates can do pretty well like i said i i really like the kestrel the merlin tristan and Cursus are all very good too. So is the Tormentor Executioner there. Uh, I, I definitely think that it's easier to kill people in no sec than it is in low sec in general with lower SP and skills. What's a good... Sorry. Sorry, I was just going to ask, how, why is that? What makes that the case? Well, the, the difference between low sec and no sec. I think the problem with uh, low sec is that there tends to be a lot more people with max skills than in no sec, and they also tend to fly a lot more generalized fits. Like a lot of people in low sec are flying fits that are designed to fight one v one, whereas in no sec they they have a lot more specialized fits that are better in gangs, but they're not very good one v one. For example, like in no sec, you'll find a lot more like you know interceptors plus bigger ships rather than in low sec where a gang might be five tristans or something that all have 1v1 fits it's, it's a lot like even uh, an alpha an alpha account can very easily kill a tech 2 player in an interceptor whereas i think you'll have a much harder time killing anyone in factional warfare space if they're flying a decent 1v1 fit Uh, there's a question, what's a good ship fitting strategy for a, a Mimitar Alpha in Faction Warfare? Is FW viable for a solo Alpha? I, I think that NoSec is a lot better for solo Alpha PvP. I know I, I've done a video of Mina Kestra where I've killed things like Hakatis. I, I don't think it would be possible to do what I did in LowSec, to be honest, because a lot more people fly generalized fits, as I said. But I, I think if you were going to do uh, FW PvP, I think... Destroyers, as an alpha, I think Destroyers are probably a good place to look. There's a player called Mr. Chunky, who's been flying a Thrasher very recently. It's just micro warp drive with two webs and artillery. Uh, and there's also another person, I think, who's done, an, uh, done an, uh, a lecture before called Kellen Darklight. I think he's still in EVE University. So he, he might be a much better person to ask than me for uh, solo FW PvP. But uh, that's what I'd probably do. I'd probably use a Destroyer. The coercer is pretty good too. You can run a no scram fit with two webs, so you can track easily and bait older players into dying to you. Is a tech quant executioner viable for no sex solo PvP? I don't like the executioner that much without tech two guns because you lose scorch. But I I, I assume you can probably run a tech quant beam fit, which should be pretty decent. I I think when it comes to to alpha clones, I think that. Mimitar and Kaldari are much better. Just because Mimitar get decent scram kiting on the Rifter hull because it gets the built-in uh, range bonus and selectable damage type. And the Kestrel also has selectable damage type and they're capless guns too, so you don't have to worry about your cap skills. But the, but the executioner can do very well. I think it could probably do pretty well with beams. Uh, there's a question, do I encounter a larger variety of fit ships, not just fits and no? Is that why a large part of why I encounter specialized fits? Yeah, I think there's a lot more fits, that, a lot more ships that you encounter in no sec ver ver uh, versus low sec. I think low sec has a much more defined meta game. And like, like it's very common to see ships like Federation, Navy, Comet, and you know exactly how they fit, AB, Scram, Web, 150mm railguns, etc. Whereas in no sec, I think people tend to fly more specialized stuff but there's also a lot more different stuff like i think there's a lot more stuff that you can kill in no sec like all the interceptors most e-war platforms uh, electronic attack frigates etc is it ever okay to use more expensive ships like t3 cruisers or destroyers with some bling or is it better to, to keep it cheap it's an, entirely up to you whatever you can afford to do there are a lot of people like mr hyde 
that enjoy flying expensive Marauders solo, etc. I, I think you should fly something that you can very easily afford to lose and, re and replace. Like, just buy, you know, 10 to 20 of that ship, store it in a station that's near low sec or no sec, and then just fly those ships. Rather than buying one pimped ship that once you lose it, you can't afford to replace it again, because otherwise I think you're going to find yourself a lot more frustrated. But, I mean, it, again, like, it's up to you what you find enjoyable. A lot of people, I personally find uh, it a lot more enjoyable to kill people flying much more expensive ships than me in my cheap Tepon frigate. But there are some people who, like, you know, they like to just fly something really expensive and well pit. And th that's how they get their fun, kind of like high-stakes poker. Do you do any industry to support your you know, PvP, like, are you building the hulls, or are you just flat out buying everything? I normally just buy everything in Jitter and then haul it myself with an alt to uh, a decent high sec system that borders null sec. I normally don't do industry to s support my PvP, or at least d uh, do the, sh the ships that I fly. But I mean, industry can be a good way to maybe save your costs or also to make money yourself, so then you can use that money to buy the ships. There's a question. In NoSec, I've been having trouble judging what I can take against my opponent. Mostly cruises up to battleships. Do you normally opt in to meet the size of your opponent's ship, or do you go off experience and use what you're comfortable with? Uh, I, I think it's kind of down to experience, because I think every region is different as well. Like if you go to delve in something bigger than a cruiser, you're probably not going to have a good time. Whereas if you go to the drone Russians, you can easily roam in a battle cruiser without finding a fight for a long time. So I, I, think, it, I think it depends on your experience, what you're used to. I, I really like flying a frigate, because it's really easy to just travel and find content. If an area is dead, it's easy to move on. If you die, you don't lose too much, etc. Uh, but but it's uh, but again I think I think you need to know sort of like the people who are living in the region and know what they're gonna bring to you because it's not it's not really fun to bring you know a battle cruiser to an to an area of space where brave newbies are living in for example because they're just gonna bring five griffins and you're gonna die whereas you could maybe get away with bringing a battle cruiser to the drone regions or uh, an area in the southeast and kill more people with it, I think, and get a, a better kind of fight that you'd be looking for. What are the must-have skills to have before starting PvP? I, um, I'm actually really grateful to CCP for adding in a lot of these skills recently. The biggest one, for sure, was thermodynamics, but I think every character that's been made since September 2015, so over a year now, uh, starts off with thermodynamics. It used to cost 5 million isk for the skill, and it, 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 meant, it meant a huge difference because, you know, 15% more DPS, 20% more tank, etc. is huge in a fight. But uh, since it's since it's now built into characters, it's a lot better. I recommend you train thermodynamics to level 3 at least, though. It's definitely a really good skill to have. Uh, aside from that, I'm not too sure what I would say essential. I'd say like any any frigate that I was flying in Nolsec, I would 100% need uh, 100 DPS at least. Uh, so I'd recommend you get skills to get enough DPS to that range. Otherwise, I mean, there's not that many essential skills that I would say. F thinking about it, I think you just would, would want to get like normal efficient skills to increase your ship's effectiveness. But there's nothing that would say you, you can't fly, you can't PvP without this skill. As a solo PvP, how do I opt, uh, how do I approach small gate camps? Do I have a recommended strategy? Uh, it depends on what you jump into. It's very knowledge-based. Uh, when I jump into a camp, the first thing you want to think of is, you know, do they have a ship that's faster than you? If they don't, you might be able to get off the gate. Uh, you might also want to look for recons, 
uh, particularly you want to look out for heavy interdictors because they have a 37.5 kilometer scram right now. So if you jump in, jump into a gate and there's a heavy interdictor on the gate, you'd almost always want to reapproach the gate. The same for a ship like the Hugin or the Lachesis, which are Galantia and Mimitar recons. You might also want to reapproach the gate if you jump into a curse. Uh, if you jump into random people, I, I think a, a good if they cannot lock you before you warp if you don't have an interdictor. And this this can be true for most frigates, I think. If they don't have an interceptor or an interdictor, normally you can just warp off. But may maybe they have a frigate like a slicer that you can kill. You can try warping off to a faraway planet. That's one of my favorite tactics is uh, add planets to your overview. Find a planet that's really far away, like 60 AU if you warp there. And if they have one frigate, like a slicer, it'll probably follow you, and they'll probably follow you to zero, so you can kill the slicer there. And his friends are going to be very far away, because they'll warp a lot slower than him. And the fight will be over, and you'll have killed him, or he'll have killed you before they land. You can also try warping to the gate at 100 and try and spit them off. But again, you need to kind of know the ranges of the ships and what their roles are. For example, a ship like a, a Cerberus means you can't fight on a gate because it can shoot rapid lights to 95 kilometers with no mods. It, it's it's very knowledge based. I think you need to know the projection of all the ships that are on the on the grid. Any kind of tackle they want. Uh, the the best strategy I think of trying to fight gate camps with a frigate is probably trying to warp away to a planet and hope that their tacklers will follow you and you can kill them there before they get help. If you're in a bigger ship, you can try and split people up through aggression. And this is something you can do with a frigate too, is if you burn back to the gate and jump, a lot of the time uh, maybe they'll leave one or two people behind to, to tackle you on the other side, but all of the rest of them will get aggressed, so you'll get the 60 seconds alone with those two people. And it, it can be a good way of turning, let's say, like a 5v1 gank into a, a good fight if two of them are on the other side and the other three are locked out of the fight for 60 seconds. There's a question about off meta fits to catch people off guard. Uh, I'm not too sure what what uh I, I personally just like to fly uh like fr frigates that are really good but people underestimate like the Kestrel. But there are a lot of decent uh, like 1v1 trap fits so you can use like the Heron. I'm sure some of you might have seen that there's a guy called Mira, I always forget his last name, who does Heron PvP videos with two tracking disruptors and he can kill savers and other frigates with them. And they th they think they're ganking a explorer and then they get killed. So the th things like that can work, can work well. You could also maybe try that with some logistic frigates that have a lot of mids like the Bantam. It's mostly a Q&A, so I, I, I think questions are, are definitely wanted. It's, it's, not more, it's not really like a, a lecture with slides, etc. So there's a question, how do you find a good region to solo PvP in for a longer time? Uh, it's a, kind of a, a difficult thing because the regions change. I think normally the best regions to PvP in are normally when a region where a new person has moved in recently, because a lot of the time they don't have like established gate camps and intel channels, etc. And they they probably since they've just moved in, they they probably have a lot more PvP ships like frigates and interceptors around to get fights from them. But in terms of uh, places to to fight, uh, you can if you. Uh, look for places where there are new player alliances, like uh, Pandemic Horde can be good to fight, Brave Newbies, if you're in a frigate. Just alliances like that, because they'll have closer skills to your skills. And they tend to be really active and eager to fight. Whereas if you go to regions in the game where people are just trying to make ISK, like Renters, they normally don't fight. They normally just go to a POS or whatever when you're in the system. Do I remember my first PvP kill? I don't actually. It's it's been a long time ago. I I think my first solo kill was just killing like a, a stupid Sino frigate. So <laughs> I don't think it, it's not that me it's not that memorable.
But again, I, I think like flying a frigate as well is a good way to just test out regions because then you can find out what's in that region and what they bring. And then after you've bought the frigate there, you can maybe decide to bring cruisers and other other stuff. What are some ways to fight small gang or solo hurricane fleet issues, given that the kite and high damage? Hurricane fleet issues are a difficult ship to solo, I think, because you need to have a, a ship that's a, a, at least a heavy assault cruiser or bigger to fight it, which is kind of expensive. I don't think you can really kill one in anything smaller than that. You'd need your own, uh, probably need your own faction battle cruiser or a heavy assault cruiser. Maybe, maybe some pirate cruisers can do it, unless you have like some weird 1v1 trap fit for it. What types of tactical bookmarks do I use? I normally use pings on gates and stations, uh, 250 or more above. So that way, if you warp there, you don't get sucked into a bubble, and it's also just a good way to sit there and be visible. I think that's one thing that's actually really important in all sector finding fires, is you want to be very visible. Uh, I think it's one of the reasons why a lot of low sec people maybe struggle to find fights in no sec. You you want to just show up to outside someone's station in a busy system and just hang there for a while and see what they do. If they don't do anything, move to another system. Also, uh, if, if they're just docking up or... Uh, you, you know, like they just go to a POS or something, move through those systems really fast. So that way you can shut down an entire constellation with a frigate if you just go from system to system to system, and then that will force them to have to try and deal with you. And of course, if they don't try and deal with you, you can move on. But normally that's a, a very good way. If they're being very risk averse, just tr be aggressive as possible, move around between a lot of systems so that they co they're constantly docking everything in the constellation. It's a question, do, do I ever do AFK cloak camping? I don't do that, it's not really my kind of PvP. I know uh, there are some people who who do like doing that, like wing spanning TT, like cloaking in a wormhole, and then killing miners, or killing industrial traffics between between two busy systems, etc. It, it's not really something that I like to do, but I mean, it is, I guess it is a, a valid PvP style. I mean, while we don't have any questions, I guess we we you can look at the to talk a bit more about the the map options that are useful. Like I talked about average pilots in space and Sinusura fields. You can also look at ships destroyed in the last hour to see where camps are and maybe where fights are happening, and to either avoid those systems or go to those systems depending on uh, you know what you what you want to do. They're a good way of seeing where camps are, especially if you look at uh, pods destroyed in the last hour. It's very common, like, it's it's pretty uncommon, actually, for a lot of people to get podded during fights. But, uh, escape pods destroyed in the last hour will show you where camps are. And it's like, big red blob, big red blob should be avoided. Hey, if you, if you went to catch on the map right now, you would see that in 9k OE, there's been 15 pod kills in the last hour, so you should avoid that system. You can also, uh, another useful thing for finding fights, I think, is if you go to the Sovereignty tab. That's not the Statistics tab, it's the tab above it called Sovereignty. And then go to Development Indexes and go to the uh, Industry tab. That shows you the industry level of those systems. Normally, uh, industry high industry systems have miners in them. And if you go there, there are a lot of ships that you can kill with, you know, frigates, destroyers, etc. Like Retrievers, Hulks. You might want to avoid procurers and skiffs, or be careful around them in frigates. But normally, if you go, if you if you use the industry tab, the industry filter, and then go to average pilots in space, and sort of look at them both at the same time, you can generally see where all the active miners are in a region and go to those systems. There's a question: How long how long average gate camp stays active for last hour map to be valid? Uh, I I think it updates every fifteen minutes. I'm not sure what the update frequency is. I I think that it's it's normally useful. If a gate camp hasn't got a kill in the last hour, then they, the the camp the gate camp is probably not there anymore. Uh, for Cobalt solo PvP, is a recon better than the SOE ships? 
Uh, I think it depends on what you want to do. I think the Stratios is probably the best ganking ship for killing Ratters, etc. If you don't have a Sino doing Black Ops bridge stuff. But I, I definitely think the Stratios is probably the best all-around cloak ganking ship. But you, you can also use the Stealth Bombers too if you're trying to gank Industrials. Like a, a good tactic to use is to uh, use the map statistics or go on to Dotland because Dotland might be a bit better for this because you can't see jumps in the last 24 hours on Dotland. I mean, on the map you can see on Dotland and maybe wait in one of those systems in a stealth bomber or a ping and you can wait for maybe a hauler to come in, like a, an industrial ship or maybe a mining ship to come through and then you can gank that ship. If you can find systems that have high high amount of jumps but generally low population I, I can i can tell you one system in delve that's kind of like this which is the system that's between the two keep star systems which is called t5zi normally there's only about 10 people in the local but there's a it's the most traveled system in delve so it, it would be a very good place to kill people who are bringing uh, the callers between those two systems and there's other systems that are examples like that around the region. But Jenny, if you can find a system that has a, a low average number of pilots in space, but high jumps in the last hour, that they tend to be very good systems to uh, cloak camp. You still there, Tony? Did your voice just cut in at the end of your sentence there? Yeah, I think my mic must have cut out then. Oh, that's annoying. Anyway, I'll, I guess I'll answer this question again. Hopefully, uh, this won't ruin the recording too much. But I, I think bubbles can be very useful for uh, provoking fights. I think if you just sit sit on the gate for a while, people tend to ignore you a bit. But as soon as you anchor a bubble on a gate, people tend to think you're serious. You've sort of like thrown your pitch in the ground kind of thing, and they tend to form up for you a lot faster. Bubbles can also be good for baiting kites as well. Like you can anchor a bubble at the sun, or a planet, an obvious celestial, and then warp to that celestial when there's a Gamma or Slicer and you're in a brawling ship and warp there and they land on you and then you can kill them in your scram range. So yeah, bubbles can definitely be useful if you're solo PvPing, if you have the space for them. A small bubble takes up 65 meters cubed. So if you're all flying an active tank ship or like a ship with an uh, ancillary booster or uh, an injected armor ship, you generally won't have enough space for it. Yeah, drag bubbles are very useful for killing kiting, kiting ships. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any other useful things on the map. I think I've talked about a lot of the useful ones. I guess one thing that can be useful is uh, if you go to the industry tab on the world map control panel, you can look at things like manufacturing jobs started in the last hour. That's, that can be a pretty useful one if you're trying to hunt haulers because uh, if there's a lot of manufacturing jobs, it means a lot of minerals have been transported to that system. And then you can maybe combine that with jumps in the last hour 
or if they have a jump bridge, you can probably put two and two together and maybe camp that system. How do you take advantage of the current event sites um, when they come out? Uh, yeah, they, they can be fun. I think actually one of the most uh, good things about the event sites is the fact that they are a dead space pocket. So what that means, if you warp to one of those sites and you can burn off maybe 200 kilometers off the entrance and some someone brings some tacklers there and they burn up to you and tackle you, that they, they're uh, if their gang mates warp to them, then they will get they will get sucked into the start of the site, kind of like FW plexes. So they they can be useful for baiting people because dead space can be a very useful defensive mechanic. But I mean, again, they can also be good places to harm people too. I, I think ge generally a lot of people just bring, normally bring destroyers or pirate cruisers into them. So if you're looking to fight those kind of ships, they they can be good places to find people, especially the current event site because the the uh, there's no gate, so you almost always land on someone if they're in it. I'm not, I'm not sure if there's uh, anything else. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Yeah, do you have any uh, successful strategies that you'd like to recommend to anybody who's looking at getting into PvP for the first time as a solo PvPer? In terms of like you know, um, picking up an initial ship and just going with it. Well, I, I really like the, the Kestrel personally. I, I think the best strategy to do, though, is to just uh, realize that the first kind of PvP encounters that you're going to get into are, are probably going to be horrible and you're probably, you know, going to mess up completely. Especially when I started first PvPing, I know a lot of people get the adrenaline rush and you forget to turn on, like, half your modules. If you're flying a, a ship like that has a small armor rep, maybe you forget to turn it on until you're in structure, things like that. So I, I'd recommend uh, you you get a lot of the ship that you're trying to fly. So for example, in this case, if we were going for Kestrels, I, I'd recommend you just take a good fit, look up someone on ZQ board. Uh, in low sec, I'd, I'd look at people like Kellon Darklight, who's also in EVE University, I think. I don't, I don't know if he still is. He he was in EV University for he a is. long time. Yeah, so he would be a, a good example. I, yeah. I would I'd find someone that's very successful and look look him up on ZQ board and just see what he's using, and just take that fit and just buy maybe twenty twenty five of those ships, and move them. If you're going to PVP in low sec, make sure they're in a high sec system that's next to low sec or maybe in a low sec staging. If you want to stage from low sec directly. Or if you're going to PvP in NullSec, take them to a high sec system that's really close to NullSec. And then just fly those ships. And uh, I think just if you're critical about your own mistakes, uh, eventually, even though you're going to lose the first few terribly, you'll eventually, uh, you know, get a decent fight. And I, I would stick to, I would probably stick to the one ship. That's kind of why why I like the Castro a lot is because it has a very low like it has very low requirements in a natural fight in terms of micromanagement because it's buffer tanked it isn't really affected by E ward too much because it's uh, the missiles uh, do not require cap to fire and missile disruption is probably the rarest form of E war. I think tracking disruption damps and ECM are much more common. And again, like you don't have to micromanage cap, you don't really have to worry about range too much. I mean, most of the time you want to fight at the edge of scram range, but if you get brawled down, it's not the end of the world. What do I think of the Rifter for solo PvP? I think the Rifter is uh, okay. I, I think if we're talking about max skilled characters, I think the Rifter kind of suffers right now, but I think the Rifter is actually one of the best ones for an alpha account. Because uh, because the Rifter has the op has the range bonus and it has a lot of fittings if you fit it with water cannons. So even even with alpha fitting skills, it's very easy to fit the Rifter with water cannons. 
And again, it just like the Kestrel, it doesn't have uh, doesn't require cap to fire, so you don't have to worry about nudes or micromanaging uh, charges as much as you do with the Kestrel. I think you'd probably run a small ancillary rifter still right now, which is kind of expensive, and you'd have to micromanage manage the charges there. But you wouldn't have to worry about cap for guns like you would for Kaldari Galanti or some of my ships. Oh, combat interceptors such as the Tranison Crusader still good for solo and also PvP. Yeah, all of the combat interceptors are very good. The Claw Raptor, Tyrannus, and Crusader are all very good. Do I use the Slasher much? Uh, I, I personally don't fight the Slasher. I don't think it's very useful in Nullsec right now. But I know it is very, it is quite good in low second a fighting fit or as a tackler. How do I keep myself from being discouraged from learning after each death when I die from a random variable? Uh, I, I'd, I'd say just to, like I said, just buy 20, 25 of the ships and move them as close as possible. So then that way, uh, if you if you die, you don't lose too much time in traveling. If you die, it's not you know, if you have 25 other ships, you don't really care about the loss so much. Also, I mean, uh, learning how to learning the turrets and looking at ships as well is a, a very good thing to do. I know there is a a uh, a picture that has all the the gun types and missile types, how they look fitted on ships, and it can be useful to learn that so you can just look at them so you don't get caught out. Or, by surprise, by like a rocket gamma or something like that. Yeah, I think the I think the Sasha might be better than the Rifter for factional warfare, but I think it depends. So, uh, I think the Sasha can be is better than the Rifter for kiting with artillery with the new fitting reduction. And I also think the Sasha can be better as kind of like a a brawler because it has the lowest sig and the fastest speed for a ship. You can fit like AB scram web tracking disruptor kind of fit and go under some guns can be useful for that yeah so someone's linked the uh, gun picks they, they can be useful to learn and compare you can also just uh, open up the market and look at the ship uh, if you if you link a, a mo if you link a gun like 200 millimeter auto cannon for example It's possible your mic is cut out again. Oh, oh god! I think my mic cut out again. You're right. But yeah, you can click on, click on that uh, weapon and then click on the icon in the top left corner, and then that will open up a preview of how it looks like when it's fitted on a ship. So even if you don't know all the modules of heart, what you can do is you can search for them and just look at them in that preview. To to see how, and then you can just compare the the picture on the ship if you're. If you're in a situation where you're deciding whether to fight or not. Yeah, it's, I think it's if I hold it down too much, it cuts out. So I guess I'll, I'll try and not talk too much. We are coming to the end of the first hour of recording, so if there's any remaining questions people would really like to know the answer to, or if they have any burning thoughts they'd like to have uh, Setonia air, that'd be great. There's a question that says, if you're unsure of ship bonuses, do you look them up before engaging or go for it and hope for the best? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I kind of know all of the ship bonuses, but it's a good idea to do, to do that if you don't know. You can always just uh, click on the info icon if you have them selected on your overview, the show info item, or you can right click the ship, show info and look at the traits. Those can be very useful to you. Like, a lot of the time in, in mirror matches, if you have the same weapon system, normally what you're trying to do is you're trying to exploit your ship bonus versus theirs. So to give you an example, let's, if you compare the, 
uh, Tyrannus to the Raptor, for example, the, the Raptor gets an optimal range bonus, whereas the Tyrannus gets a tracking bonus. So if you're the Raptor pilot, you want to try and use your optimal range bonus. So you'd want to load Null against a Tyrannus. Even though you have the same weapon system, what you want to do is you want to use the, the, the optimal range bonus that you have and he doesn't. And likewise, the Tyrannus has the tracking bonus, which the Raptor doesn't. So the Tyrannus pilot will want to go in close and try and maximize traversal and exploit his tracking bonus that the Raptor doesn't have. When considering engaging in PvP, what are a couple of red flags you may see that are universal, if any? Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I think it, it's easy to tell. if so, Sometimes if you look at someone's ship, you can normally tell the debate. Like, for example, if you see a procurer that only has one miner going or something, or is, is not mining, but it's in a belt, it, it might have newts in the highs instead. Or you can look at ships too, see how many guns that they have too. Like if you look at if you look at a, a Punisher or a Mauler is a very good example of this. Uh, a Mauler is sometimes used as a bait cruiser with a Sino on it, or it can be a bait cruiser that has small guns fitted. So if you look at the Mauler, you can see if it has guns or not. If it doesn't have the normal five guns, that they could either be small frigate guns, or maybe it only has four small frigate guns or four guns, and it probably has a Sino in the in the other high slot. So you would probably not engage it. Uh, that fit is more or less current, the, the one that you linked. There, there's a few changes that you have to make to it, though, because of the Tiracide patch. But you basically, you just use a named heatsink instead, and the same fit works. And change the point to the range bonus point instead of the J5B, which is cap reduction now. Again, like if you think someone's bait too, uh, there are useful tools for that as well. You can look them up on zkillboard.com. That's uh, one example that I didn't say. Look, look at you know, look at their losses. See if they've lost that same ship before and how it was fitted. You can also look at their kills too. You know, do they fly solo or do they have uh, different ships on? You know, if there's a couple of carriers on his most recent kills, then he's probably ha probably has a Sino. Or, you know, and if he does have like a few solo kills, maybe he is just trying to fight you, etc. I think uh, Eve Overmind also has a a useful tool like this. I think Parasitical Helper helps too. That I think they have a they have like warning tags on it, like it's possible Sino bait, etc. I mean, you can also tell a lot of the time by their behavior, like a mining or industrial ship that's, you know, hanging about around the gate is probably bait. Uh, another thing you can do as well, a lot of people, when they try to bait you with industrials or uh, I think logistic cruisers are another really popular bait ship as well as the mauler, is if they jump into the same system as you, a lot of the time they will align. They won't try to warp. And if you try to look at their ship, if you can look at their ship, it means they're aligning and they're not warping. So they're trying to bait you into tackling them rather than warping off. That that's also another useful way to tell. <laughs> I mean sometimes you can be surprised by people be like being weird. But a lot of the time if what they're doing doesn't make sense, it's probably a trap. I guess that's it then for the questions. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, but there's a, there's a few more. I, do you want me to answer them, or I don't know when you I want think, to wrap this up? I, th I think for now what I'm going to do is stop recording, and uh, we'll continue to take questions as long as you're happy to stick around and answer them. But I think we've got a good hour of recording done, and uh, this is a good time to wrap the, the formal class. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. So, Tony, thank you so much for being available for today's Q&A. And uh, again, everybody, please feel free to continue to post your questions, but I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you.